what makes religion so resilient? You know, I'm sure you've got a couple of go-to answers, but before you throw them out there, consider how thoroughly we have won the intellectual side of this argument. I, I mean, the best the other side can do is trot William Lane Craig out there in hopes he can confuse an audience into thinking that believing in God is an intellectual suicide, but that's it. I mean, the religious position isn't just inferior, it's logically impossible, and yet it's the majority view. Consider how well the last couple of centuries have gone for us. Like, every new discovery has broken our way. God did it could have been the answer to any number of questions, but over and over again, it wasn't. And you know, we've explored everything we can think to explore, and nowhere have we found evidence for a God. Every explanation that withstood scrutiny has been God-free, and yet God is still the most frequently cited explanation for shit. And from a purely intellectual perspective, we're lobbing ICBMs and they're throwing their slingshots at us for a lack of rocks to put in them. We're not just winning the battle. We won the battle, gathered the bodies, burned them on a pyre, cleaned up the field, repaired the shell craters, replanted the trees, and built a fucking memorial. But from an emotional perspective, we still seem to be getting our asses kicked. And that's the root of the much maligned claim that you can't reason someone out of something they didn't reason themselves into. Now... I know a lot of people take issue with that claim because they all know somebody who was reasoned out of religion or hell, maybe they themselves are a person who was reasoned out of religion. So yeah, the statement might not be technically correct, but it still captures an important detail of our fight and one that we can't ignore. You know, I mean, sure, maybe you were reasoned out of religion, but along the way you were also emotioned out of it. You know, most of the people I know who reason their way out of faith, yeah, they read some books and they watched some debates and whatnot, but that came after they fought through the emotional anchor of their faith. And when people say you can't reason a person out of religion, that's what they're talking about. What they're saying is that evangelizing isn't and can't be a purely intellectual practice. We have to deal with the emotional components as well. And when it comes to the emotional front at a glance, we're hopelessly outgunned. We're as outgunned on this front as they are in the intellectual one, right? I mean, we come by it honestly. We're limiting ourselves to verifiable true stuff, and they can say whatever the fuck they want. So when it comes to death, they offer up eternity in paradise, and all we've got is you won't be around to realize it sucks. When a tornado rips through your house, they offer a direct pipeline to a mute but omnipotent intercessor, and all we've got is promising data on some like more advanced warning systems, maybe. You know, when it comes to the vagaries of fortune, they offer up an inexplicable but inestimably important role in the divine architecture of the universe, and all we've got is the butterfly effect. And now look, our stuff works better, sure, because their shit doesn't exist, and that's why our victory on the intellectual front is so complete. You know, chemotherapy might not be as emotionally satisfying as praying to God to forgive you for masturbating, but it's a hell of a lot more effective. But when you're choosing between something like prayer and chemo, you're making an intellectual distinction, right? When you're choosing whether to believe Fido is in puppy heaven or just accept the fact that he doesn't exist anymore, there needn't be an intellectual component at all. I mean, for me, yes. For you, probably yes. There's an intellectual component to every decision, but there doesn't have to be. At a glance, there's nothing invested in that distinction other than your emotions. And sure, if you pick at that scab of their motivated reasoning, even the tiniest bit, you'll be reenacting the elevator scene from The Shining, but you don't have to pick at the scab. I mean, again, maybe you do, maybe I do, but one needn't pick at it. You know, if you think to yourself, wow, God intentionally killed my dog and now Fido's stuck in dog heaven for another couple of decades wondering where the fuck I am, the whole thing falls apart. If you think to yourself... I think I could come up with better ways of sending a message than ripping through my house with a fucking tornado, and I'm not even all-knowing. The tower collapses, and I suspect that most religious people know that, which is precisely why they don't think these things. I mean, look, you sprinkle a few mysterious ways here and there, take a few miracle stories at face value, and get all your apologetics from C.S. Lewis, you can spend a lifetime scratching at an occasional itch around the scab without ever picking at it directly. And of course, if you or I just reach over there and pick at the scab ourselves, we're not exposing a flaw, we're inflicting a wound. So the theist just wraps a bandage around it, lets the scab grow back over, and removes us from their lives. So where does that leave us? Right? I mean, we've got to get around this emotional shell before we can dig into the intellectual part where we know we're going to win. And despite some valiant efforts to point out that, like, you know, our atoms were born in the hearts of dying stars and whatnot, the fact that the same is true of dung fungus kind of mutes the emotional impact of that kind of shit. And besides, those efforts are fighting on religion's turf. I mean, yes, we need to engage people emotionally, but we don't need to use the same emotion. You know, religion reinforces itself through a combination of fear, joy, and sadness. And those are all really strong emotions, but so are anger and disgust. Look, if you want to penetrate the emotional shell that protects religion, show religious people the ugly shit. 
Show them the destitute people that charlatan preachers are taking advantage of. Show them the innocent children the pedophile priests are raping. Show them the artificial barriers they've erected in front of scientific and social progress. Show them a child trembling in fear of the devil. Show them a lesbian trembling in fear of herself. Show them the bombed marketplace strewn with the corpses of infidels. Show them the endless cavalcade of historical ills that were wrapped in holy text and ask them which matters more. All the lives ruined by the unaccountable authority of God or their comforting delusion about puppy heaven.